Good day everyone, welcome back to my channel. As promised, today I will be talking on the firmware to get your SL120 controller in order to work with the L Connect 2, which the AL has already making use of it. Let's get into it. Before I proceed, make sure that you test your device properly, the SL and the AL. Now, in the event whereby you need to actually disconnect all the cables from the uh, controller itself, which I'm going to show you here, now, make sure you do not pull from the cable, like what I'm actually showing you here. Do not pull it this way. If you want to remove, let's say for example, the uh, fan connection, right? Hold on to the connector and twist slowly and you'll be out. So this is actually the correct way. If you were to actually pull on the cable itself, right? This will snap. Same goes to here. Make sure you press this for the ARGB itself, right? Make sure you press it down then twist and take it out and make sure you hold on to the connector itself now for this right for the uh, USB connector and the SATA cable and the PWM which I have not connected now if you really want to take it out right make sure you hold on to the cable properly firmly and twist slowly and gently it will come out okay now, more about the uh, control unit itself, be it the AL or the SL controller, make sure at each output, do not, I repeat that again, do not connect more than four fans. If you're gonna connect more than that, right? Anyway, on my left, you can see that the L connect here is actually stated that each output, okay, for the SL is four, for the AL is four. So make sure you do not connect more than four fans because there is a load limitation on this controller itself. This presentation will be lengthy for those of you who wanted to know how to actually do the firmware directly to your control unit, right? The SL control unit, you can skip this. I'll leave the uh, timestamp in my description. For those of you who are actually new to this unit itself, and this is the first time you're using it, kindly go through the presentation. Now, as you can see here, be it the SL family or the AL family, you will have a controller, the fans, and the application. As you can see at the top right, the SL family, why am I indicating two controllers? Just to let you guys know that there is an earlier version, or should I say the very first version, the controller itself right, does not have this SL labeling on the controller itself. Else for the newer version, you have this SL labeling on the controller. To control either fans, be the SL or the AL, the uh, RPMs on the fans itself and the ARGB, either fans, you will need this application called L Connect. Now, for the SL itself, it's actually making use of L Connect, the original application. And for the AL, which is actually the newer fans, or should I say newer model, they can only make use of L Connect 2 and not L Connect. Else for SL controller, right, they are able to actually make use of the L Connect 2, which I'm going to show you in the firmware process later. Now just to show you the original application where you can actually obtain them, you can hit down to Leonie's official website. Now this is actually the SL family as you can see here. When you scroll down right you will see this uh, download over here. This is actually the original L Connect application for SL fans. And for AL, this is actually the AL family. When you scroll down there's a L Connect 2 application which is actually meant for your AL fans. I've mentioned to you that you will be able to use the SL control unit on L Connect 2 application, but there will be a firmware needed on the older generation controller. On the official website itself, be it the SL family or the AL family, or should I say the pages, you will see this guidebook here. And when you download it, right, it will show you this guidebook. This is actually all the step-by-step -step guide to actually do the firmware on the SL fan itself. See, these are all the instructions. Now, I'm going to break it down for you in general and to show you how I do the firmware on the SL unit. I'll start off with the AL fans. These are the latest model from the Unifan family. Now, the controller itself has this AL labeled in the controller itself. Make sure you make use of the L Connect. Next will be the SL family. Now on the newer model, right, it has this SL label on the controller itself and you can directly either use the L Connect or L Connect 2, not an issue. 
Now come to the older version of the SL unit. This is actually the older controller whereby you don't have the SL laboring on the controller itself. You can only use the L Connect application and not the L Connect 2 application unless you do a firmware. And I'm going to show you right now how you do the firmware. In my presentation slide, I've actually extract from here, which is this portion here, whereby you need to actually do the firmware on a controller, or should I say the SL controller, without the SL mark. So you need to actually go to Situation 2, scroll down, and look for Situation 2. And this is Situation 2. Now, there are all the steps over here you can actually follow. So first thing you need to do is actually download the application, which is actually the download package. This is what you will get. Then from there, open with zip extractor, and you have this. Once you have this right, download the two files. First is actually the firmware, the other one is actually the firmware 2. Once you have actually downloaded the uh, firmware and the firmware 2, next will be your control unit. This is actually an old control unit whereby it does not have the SL labor on the control unit itself. Now, first thing to take note is make sure there are no connection, as in like the uh, fan connection to the unit itself, the ARGB and the fan load. You only need to actually connect the USB connector from the controller to your motherboard USB 2 header. Now I'm actually using this splitter here. Reason being right, pro tip, when things go wrong right, this unit will blow first instead of your motherboard. So if you want to, you can actually purchase this. Now I've actually mentioned this before in my previous video, you can actually take a look. I'll leave the URL at my top right hand corner. Next, you will need to take note is actually the SATA cable. Make sure it's connected and it's power. In your PC, the first thing you need to actually check is to make sure that the controller is connected to your system. Highlight on this PC, do a right click, click on manage and you will get this. From here, under device manager, select the last section here, the universal serial bus device, make sure you have this LND. Once this is done right, the first thing you need to do is to get rid of this L connect. Now, I would advise everyone to actually use this application known as Revo Uninstaller, whereby it does a clean uninstallation. I will show you how the application look like. Oh, by the way, I will leave the uh, URL on this application in my description. You can actually download it and install it. Now, this is actually the uh, Revo Uninstaller. What it does is actually it tracks all your application that's installed on your system. Right now, I'm going to uninstall this. So I'll double click this and you'll prompt me this. You can actually set a restore point, system restore point, or you can actually do without. For me, I know that it's safe. So I'll just go without, continue, and you have this. Okay, these are the options that you can select. Select to advance, scan. What this does is actually it will pick up all the uh, registry leftover files that is related to this application. You can actually go through it, but normally I'll just put delete. I'll delete everything. I'll delete again. So it's done. Cleared. Completely remove. Once you have done that, right, deactivate any antivirus application that you have. And for me, right, I'll just disable the uh, Microsoft Windows security. Under the virus and threat protection, I will go to this section here, protect updates. Oh no, sorry. It's actually manage setting. I'll disable this, the real time protection. You can leave the rest alone, just this. Next, go to the download folder where you have actually downloaded the firmware and the firmware 2. On the firmware 2, right click, run as administrator. Now, when this prompt, right, click on scan devices. I've actually one device detected. Now, drop down and to select on the device. This is actually the uh, uni controller. Next, browse. Select the firmware file. Once you have actually done right, click on start update and let it run. Once it is done right, next thing you need to do is to check if the uh, controller is updated or not. So once again, 
on this PC, do a right click, click on manage. Where you see this, tap on device manager and select the last one. And as you can see here, it's updated. Initially it was Lenny, right now it's actually Unifan SL version 1.2. Now, once this is done, right, it's time to actually shut down your PC, switch off the uh, power supply and to unplug the power cable and let it sit for about 30 to 45 seconds, then power it back on again. Now, reason to practice this, right, is to flush out whatever is actually recited as in like the uh, old registry and such. Now, before you power up your PC, make sure you connect all the fans and connection, make sure everything is ready, then boot up your PC. Once that's done, right, go back to the guidebook where you say situation two. Now, I've actually gone through all the steps with you. Scroll down till you see this section over here, and it's time to actually download the L Connect application and install the application. Now I've actually connected all my fans on the controller itself and to make use of the L Connect too. Now, do take note that the first two controllers, in fact, I've actually done a firmware. These are the original SL, or should I say the older version of SL controller, and this is actually the AL controller. So what it does is actually the AL will control the AL fan. The uh, middle SL fan, which I've actually done the firmware, will control the center, and this will control the last. Now let me take you to the L Connect 2, but before I do so, let me just shift this. Now, as you can see on the L Connect 2 application itself, right, there are two different sections whereby you have the SL and the AL. So if I am to control the AL, take for example, I would to switch the colors to static. See, it changed. Or I can actually set it to some other things like Tai Chi. You will follow. And then if you notice on the uh, SL, if I were to click here, now you have controller one and controller two. Controller one is this, controller two is this. So if I were to select controller one and I would to set it to let's say static, see it follows and this remains. Unless I switch to controller two and this will be controlled. For example, breathing, I will just do this. See, it's breathing. Or maybe some other colors like run away. See, it will just follow. So this is actually the beauty of the L Connect 2 application whereby you can keep adding on up to about, I think it's about 64 fans, but no one's gonna go crazy about it. So this is actually just an illustration. There you have it. I've actually shown you how to do the firmware on the SL older version controller. So I myself have actually done two just to illustrate to you that the L Connect version two is able to control up to four controllers. Right now you see it's actually three controllers. Now, if you want to actually do more than three controllers, right, I would advise you to get a speaker like what I've done here. Now, make sure one speaker use right is to control two controllers so if you want a third and fourth right get another splitter this way right you will not you know overload the uh, splitter itself nor the controllers itself so make sure you do that and do take note that when you're connecting four controllers right as you know that one controller can take up to 16 fans so four controller is 64 fans if you're gonna do that right okay i got to sleep to you just take note on the thermal in your case itself because ARGB does run hot. So please practice safely. Now on my next video, right, I will talk about the performance, the uh, airflow of the AL and the SL. I will talk about the case airflow and the static pressure on radiators. Now having to say this, right, I did receive two package of this. This is actually the uh, new version of the Gentle Typhoon coming from XPG. Now, um, I'm not too sure who sent this to me. I just found it in my doorstep and it's actually coming from China. For whoever who actually sent me this, right? Thank you very much. I will do a review on this and I hope that you can actually tell me who you are. Now, having said so, I do have a request coming from a viewer and he was asking me if I could actually test the um, Cooler Master SF120M, which is quite nice, the fan I should say, well built, is actually dual ball bearing, to compete 
with the Genta Typhoon. I'm just going to test it out with this two. And additional to it, of course, you guys favorite the Noctua, which is actually the HL 25 times 25 PWM. So I will be testing all these fans. Now, for those of you who are actually new to my channel, right, welcome. And if you like my content, do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Goodbye. See you.